there are no disclosures, uh, we'll talk about a bit hypothermia. Okay, just first of all, we'll go through what uh, degrees of hypothermia there is. Um, just know normal term as uh, what we mentioned, usually it's it as below 38, um, but we usually put it as between 36 to 37, and consider it as 5 normal as well. And this do not require active cooling. I'll, I'll put emphasis on this part. This usually doesn't require active cooling unless the initial temperatures are high. Mild hypothermia is uh, between 22 to 35, uh, usually uh, requires active cooling and even control shivering because. And may require sedation and neuromuscular blockade to achieve that. Moderate is 28 to 32 with a uh, high risk of adverse events and uh, usually requires a uh, hypo and uh, uh, extra corporal circulatory support. Deep, um, it goes beyond that and it shouldn't be even in a therapeutic realm unless you're considering chronic pain. Okay, uh, okay we, the reason why I'm talking about this is based on ill call uh, recommendations um, because most of our scientific uh, advances and everything is really we often see the advice of the call as well. So uh, it's mentioned in 2010 uh, in a circulation published by the Newcom group that therapeutic hypothermia may be beneficial for adolescents who remain comatose after resuscitation, where witness out of hospital or out of EF, basically a cardiac cause of arrest, and may be considered infants and children who remain comatose after resuscitation from cardiac arrest as well. So where is this from? Uh, animal studies and animal studies have shown for therapeutic hypothermia that if you cool early, cool long enough, you cool quickly, you maintain temperature fluctuations. And I need to emphasize this point because uh, I'm sure you guys have gone through the therapeutic hypothermia uh, sessions in one of the talks here. And then basically, temperature fluctuations allows the, the reperfusion hits the reperfusion to worse because you basically constrict, basically dilate, and it increases the, the uh, reperfusion. You need to rewarm slowly, and this goes together with what we mentioned just now about reperfusion injury. So the most critical part is actually the rewarming phase. It's easy to cool, but you have to be very careful about rewarming condition. And of course, avoid overshoot hypothermia. Uh, everything goes to waste if uh, hypothermia results uh, when you cool quickly, uh, when you warm quickly as well. So um, basically, therapeutic hypothermia post cardiac pediatric cardiac arrest. Recommendations were inferred first of all from uh, adults. Basically, uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, there are various settings for this shockable, non shockable setting out of hospital or in hospital arrest as well. Newborn uh, from a uh, birth asphyxia with HIV. So, we will really talk about this uh, in, in, uh, in, in succession and how is it applicable to pediatric age group. So, are we cool? First of all, based on the recommendations, are we starting to cool patients? And uh, as, I, as Colin has mentioned, they are first it's recommended in Australian Resuscitation Council that we should start cooling. Um, so, uh, and in the UK survey published in the uh, Emergency Medicine Journal, and a survey of most UK pediatric uh, emergency that they actually have at least one method of cooling. Unfortunately, this didn't mention that we actually can use it or not. Um, so, it's uh, not that conclusive as well. First of all, uh, we will talk about therapeutic hypothermia in the newborn uh, with regards to new uh, spits here. And a HIV basically. So based on everything, uh, so what they do is that uh, based on everything that has uh, come about, uh, the evidence for this group, the newborns, is actually quite good. Based on Cochrane reviews that shown that uh, the it improves, uh, it improves, decreases mortality, improves neurological outcome as well, and with improve, uh, improvement in survival rates. And uh, unfortunately. Uh, I'll just not, because it's not part of emergency medicine uh, resuscitation, so I'll read through uh, the, the results of the clinical cooling. But however, if you do not concentrate on the initial resuscitation, uh, because in IC, uh, in the ICUs, you know, the ICUs, what they found that even if you institute uh, cooling for HIV or birth asphyxia, the outcome is not as great as those in developed countries. So the take home message is that concentrate on basic resuscitation first uh, before you, you know, before you so this is a meta analysis of uh, effects of cooling on neonatal mortality for king and lower uh, middle income countries. And you can see that the effects are not as fantastic as uh, the developed countries. So the relevance of newborn studies, uh, they found that uh, newborns can be safely cool for 72 hours safely. Uh, HIV can be identified within 6 hours with two clinical assessed biochemical methods. Uh, hyperthermia is associated with adverse outcomes. And safety and efficacy is noted at eight months. 
However, how do you translate this into pediatrics? Um, they are at different stages of brain development. Oxygen requirements are different, and they have different types of cell followers. Their hemoglobin is different from the pediatric age group, actually. So then let's look into so it works in units uh, for HIV. So what about adults, which are the main recommendations to form an infant form? Um, so if you have enough about adult therapeutic uh, hypothermia, um, we'll quickly run through, I won't uh, repeat, but a lot of talk has been, uh, discussion has been made since uh, um, the, about this, and a lot of workshops worldwide that endorse uh, therapeutic hypothermia. So this is basically based on three major studies, the Himachi Bernard as well as the Hata trial, and this was published, and this were the three seminal trials that uh, created uh, the, the therapeutic hypothermia uh, which showed improved in outcomes in terms of survival and neurological outcomes as well. And if you look uh, closely at the three landmark trials, um, and I just amalgamated them together, there's a total N of 33, of which hypothermia group was 195 if you uh, put them all together, and the normal thermia was 188. And you can see that in the Hunter trial, the p-value is uh, significant for favorable neurological uh, recovery, and in Bernard, but not so much in Timachi. And at six months post stable uh, neurological recovery is only found in the Hunter trial. And furthermore, there's uh, substantiating evidence which seems to concur uh, based on retrospective non-randomized control trials that seems to show that there seems to be improved outcomes. And these numbers are really based on uh, 1,145 and they divide it into the BT group and the AC system group, which seems to show that there's a good outcome. Um, the comment about such studies is that they usually compare with a historical cohort, and even the authors themselves who mentioned uh, that um, more than more those in the later years, this study was done in 2005 to 2009, and those in the later years tend to have elevated hypothermia. So the time correlation of this may not be so evident. So the paper outcomes in due to the therapeutic hypothermia or advances in resuscitation capacity. So because of the data. Okay. So in 2000 and 2009. So obviously the more the recent cohort step therapeutic hypothermia as well. And the cocaine review in 2012, in terms of neurological outcome, um, basically based on everything that is said to look in 2012, uh, again it went back to the first three landmark jobs. So uh, even though with further trials and further use of therapy hypothermia, the only three randomized controlled trial was Bernard, Maka, and uh, Hamachi. Hamach. And another one which involved uh, ECMO uh, extracorporeal was actually done by uh, extracorporeal cooling, was done by PC as well. And again, they showed that uh, uh, the later trials they did not show so much in terms of survival as well. If you analyze them accordingly, uh, so survival outcome was not as uh, Robust as we thought it was. Um, Nelson published this uh, landmark trial, which got everybody start, uh, starting, uh, started talking about this. Uh, basically, they did a multi center uh, control trial on targeted temperature uh, control versus uh, therapeutic hypothermia. So, one of them tried at the uh, combination of post arrest at 33 and another at 36. And the numbers, as you can see, is actually much higher than most three trials combined, with a total number of 939. Um, so they actually found no significant difference whether they had that six versus the two. So there was no difference in outcome in terms of mortality, and as well as neurological function. And this is a multi centered trial. And uh, this is not quite therapeutic hypothermia. Uh, one of the tendencies is that you can actually start early. Maybe we're starting a bit late. So um, there's another trial by Kim, We seem to state that uh, the pre-hospital cooling can really affect, uh, you know, uh, because some in some, in some places where uh, post-resuscitation care occurs much later due to distance or otherwise. Uh, so they tried pre-hospital cooling, and again, uh, whether you cool early or late uh, doesn't make a difference. So there lies um, another question: Does therapeutic hypothermia work in the first place? Um, a lot of studies have shown that uh, hypothermia occurs not uncommonly uh, post cardiac arrest. So this is done in studies, uh, animals, where they showed that induced hypothermia exacerbates neurologic neur uh, neuronal damage after the sexual cardiac arrest uh, in rats, of course it's a rat studies. And, uh, but 
the implications does it component comes to this? So I can actually look through this and uh, basically uh, from what I've noted about for pediatric population uh, in, the, in the study by the uh, American Heart Association measured a stream for CPR investigators, they found um, they actually recorded the temperature variations post cardiac events for children. And they noted that uh, with the number of 547, about 43 actually had one temperature above the day. So post cardiac arrest, they tend to get hyper. And 5.5% actually had persistent temperature over 38 post arrest as well. Okay? And they found that associated with this, persistent hyperthermia for 24 hours was associated with unfavorable neurological outcome. So what does this mean? Uh, heart is bad, but personally who is supposed to do it? So that is the question. So if you look at it, uh, they should re look into the recommendations uh, based on the new studies and what animal studies have and actually found. What about children? So we're talking about children. So is it applicable in children? We are still, we still do not have consensus yet, but there's still not enough evidence for us to recommend therapeutic hypothermia in children. Because what we know now in adults may not be exactly what they thought it was. Um, so we know hypothermia is bad. Normal thermia, we are not too sure. But hypothermia is it better than normal thermia? Is it? So uh, there's no published controlled trials for pediatric cardiac arrest. This is, and the only ones that we could find were two retrospective observational studies from Dorothy and Finn, and one prospective observational trial from uh, Bertram. And basically, um, there was no difference in mortality and no improvement in good neurological outcome. Unfortunately, the groups that were uh, entered therapeutic hypothermia versus not, the, person, the patients receiving therapeutic hypothermia were sicker, um, needed more resuscitation, had higher lactate. And, uh, and had higher multiple of uh, dysfunction scores. So it was a non comparable group, so I could compare the outcomes uh, when the, the group that underwent therapeutic hypothermia was sicker. So, do we have any evidence? Thankfully, uh, uh, look into the clinical trial registries. I've actually found a few trials looking at this specific question. So, the DACA trial is actually done by CHOP, and they are looking for prospective RCT for. Pediatric patients aged uh, <coughs> with cardiac arrest and looking for any treatment to be for in hospital and partner of hospital. And the intervention is now hypothermia, 33 to 34 for 48 hours, followed by 3 days of normal thermia, and it's a slow uh, increase in the rewarding state. And the control will be 5 days of normal thermia, and the outcome would be neurological outcomes and trauma. Uh, another group is also looking uh, at the Hypothermia for cardiac arrest phase 2 trial. Um, this one looks at in and both in and out of hospital arrest and they're looking at the high power hypothermia for 48 hours. And uh, the control is normal thermia again and neurological outcomes at 12 months. Again, none of them have actually caught any injury results as of yet. Another trial, N equals to 40, unfortunately, this is a surrogate. Uh, it induces a uh, biochemical markers as surrogate of brain injury. So they are looking specifically at uh, surrogate markers using plus markers at MRI. So they are looking at neurological damage as opposed to neurological function. Um, now that we have talked about, uh, is there any other use for therapeutic punishment? We are not so sure in pediatric now. Uh, we are not so sure in adults actually now. So are there any uses uh, for severe traumatic brain injury uh, using therapeutic so, a uh, re-look into all the studies that have shown that uh, it seems to favor a little bit if you look at the concrete results, uh, the, sorry, the systematic analysis of all the RCTs using therapeutic hypothermia for se severe brain injury in children. But if you actually look at the quality of the trials, um, it didn't make any difference at all. And uh, in this uh, big trial, who kids, unfortunately, they stopped recruiting after the interim results. Uh, were available. So what they did was um, they actually um, uh, used uh, a randomized controlled RCT on hypothermia versus normal thermia in severe brain injury in children. And this was a phase 3 trial. And they stopped after collecting some examinations because they didn't find any, uh, sorry, they didn't find any uh, difference in uh, neurological outcomes. 
And so it was stopped, and then um, the study was uh, terminated prematurely. So recommendations for therapeutic hypothermia for TBIs in children is actually um, is uh, not conclusive, and we don't recommend it. It doesn't change the standard of care. Potential uh, applications. Uh, personally, I've seen a few who seem anecdotally get better on infection junction uh, and not the COVID part yet. Uh, there's a suggestion in liver failure in the work. Uh, refractory status and epilepsis again. Uh, there's a suggestion to fool the neurons, uh, prevents hyper excitability and prevent neuron damage. And of course, spinal cord injury. But spinal cord injury probably uh, is lower in terms of evidence and pathophysiology as well. So, in summary, quickly, for pediatric cardiac arrest, the use of therapeutic hypothermia is still controversial. Uh, we're awaiting the RCT trial. In fact, it would be better if we see more trials on the adults uh, so that we can make better conclusions. Um, but my question is uh, actually, my main focus for this talk is this. Just do know that hypothermia post cardiac arrest is actually bad, and so you need to treat it aggressively. So, is the answer actually in temperature targeting? So, sometimes what we're doing. If this patient is not, most of them post arrest that are cool, but we don't do active monitoring per se, we don't keep a close eye on the temperature. So sometimes they get hypothermia, then we intervene. Is that too late uh, for, for patients like this? Is the answer actually looking at making sure that they, they do not get hypothermia? Do we need to define what normal thermia post arrest is? Uh, do we consider less than 38 or should we consider not below the not above the 75? So those are some of the questions we really need to ask uh, instead. And for severe pediatric uh, brain injury, the use of therapeutic hypothermia is controversial still. And of course, again, hypothermia is bad. And you need to treat it aggressively as well. And for newborn with asphyxia, with a uh, state hypoxic and hypnopathy, the use of therapeutic hypothermia is recommended, but outcomes are better if you first concentrate on the basic resuscitation advanced resuscitation plan, then think about the post resuscitation plan, making sure that the, the, the units and the newborns get the optimal uh, recovery, instead of just focusing on one aspect of uh, uh, neuronal preservation. Okay. So, uh, there will be questions to the last session, which is pretty short. <laughs>